Hello YouTube. In the process of restoring my lathe, which I started about 8 months ago, uh, I stumbled upon a few issues that I'm gonna make a video today about. And one of them is aligning and uh, adjusting the axis of the cross slide. So I'm gonna move the camera closer and show you what are the problems that I have, where is the challenge that I have. Hopefully there are some other people that will find useful my experience of going through this and perhaps they will not make the same mistakes and not end on the same roadblocks that I did. Okay, so I have, we have this cross slide and uh, in the beginning uh, this was quite worn out, so after the regrind, these surfaces have went down. Uh, so in order to correct for that, in order to avoid machining a new gib, I followed uh, Keith Rooker example. So I, I added Turkite on these two, and I right now they are scraped and mashed together. Also, as you'll see in the upcoming video, the geometry of the machine, or I mean, this uh, front dovetail is parallel with the granite once it's aligned with the z-axis. And uh, these two are parallel. Okay, so we start from that. And now we add the slide. And this is the gib. This is tapered, and this will uh, this will actually uh, set this. This this sh should set this free of movement, but without play. Okay, so I have set. I have a screw in the back that is right now set, and uh, that screw. I mean, b basically, the Intel travel of the machine will be up to this point. And somewhere here. So after setting this up, what I noticed is that uh, I have play here. To visualize what that play means, I'm gonna add this indicator here. So as you can see, it's quite big. But also I don't have this play in the back. So in the back, no play at all. Okay, uh, right now if I bring this uh, in the front, till here it kind of moves free and from this on, on this portion it binds. But as you can see, basically only right now the end part of the gib is starting to come in contact with the dovetail. So basically when I when I bring it forward from this point on I, I can no longer uh, move it. Okay so right now in the front in, in this direction it's actually binding but I still have play. Okay I have wrapped my head around this and I'm gonna try to do some measurements to see if the angle of the 
if the, the angle of the gib matches the angle of the slide. In theory, if these two are matching, starting from the fact that the guides are parallel to each other, it should move freely. So now I'm gonna show you how I try to do the measurements. Okay, so in order to diagnose the issue that I have uh, while trying to match the saddle, I mean the top slide with the saddle, I said that I'll check the angle, I'll check if this angle matches the angle of the dovetail, of the gib. So in order to do that, I have done the following setup. So in the vise of the milling machine, I have set this uh, magnetic vise from the surface grinder and I have inclined this a bit like this so that when I'm traversing this edge I'm reading zero across the entire length. So that tells me that once, I mean if, if I measure the inside of this dovetail and I'm zero across the whole length, that means that my and my, my magnetic table it's angled at the correct angle so basically it cancels this one and from my logic if the angles of the gib and the slide are correct when I'm putting this here so if I'm putting this here and I'll turn on the magnet Okay, so now I, I have turned on the magnet and the logic tells me that if so if here across the entire length is at zero while I'm crossing this if the angle is okay if the angles are the same it should say zero. So let's go to thread measurement and see what values do we got. Okay, so Right now I have set here in the gib, I have set a 10 millimeter end mill shank so that uh, I'm taking, I'm measuring this and I added a gauge block on top of that. So right now I'm gonna drop the Z a bit. Okay, so right now I'm at zero. And uh, so right now if I move, I'll try to move this without moving the, so if I come back, I'm at zero. Okay, so now I'll move this in here and we'll jog on the x-axis. And it's close to zero. Okay, what I'll try to do now, I'll try to move the end mill. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. Okay, so basically, as you can see, if I'm traversing this table, the angle is zero. Okay, so right now, I have set the indicator to match the, I mean, to touch the gib. And I'm gonna traverse it towards the thinner end. And the thinner end is toward that way. I have set X axis to zero, so this is the coordinate of X axis, and now we're slowly jogging. And as you can see, I'm increasing quite a lot.
it's basically on a distance of 300 millimeters I'm raising So on 307 millimeters it went up 1.2 millimeters so that would tell me that the angle of the gib is far off from the angle of the saddle if that would be the case the solution would be quite simple but I'm not convinced this is I'm not convinced the angle can be that off so I'm gonna do another check okay so now I'm repeating the same measurement on the granny table so what I'm planning to test now is so first I'm gonna do some prerequisite measurements so first I'm gonna check that the this edge is parallel with this edge so we're using the granny surface plate which is a master surface and we know it's flat so I'm gonna add this here we set this to zero okay and I'm gonna traverse it the entire surface and as you can see it's flat within a hundred of a millimeter okay I have stoned this so I don't have any burrs or something okay just for double checking I'm gonna check this side too okay so we have this side <coughs> we have concluded that these two sides are parallel okay now I'm gonna check that this dovetail here is parallel with the granite so in order to do that what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add this gauge pin we're gonna set the dial indicator here I'm adding a slight preload of, I don't know, maybe 500 of a millimeter or something like that. So right now we are on zero. Okay, so I'm going to move this across the entire length. A plus one. sure it's relevant anymore oh no I've messed the indicator yeah let's go back here so we are on zero maybe a plus one here I'm gonna flip this onto the other side add in the gib and if the measurement that I've previously made on the milling machine is, is correct I should be seeing the same result here Okay, let's see what we have. Right now I'm adding the gib as it should be. Okay. 
okay so basically this is the position in which the gib will sit and now let's repeat the same thing first I'm gonna do it with an 8 millimeter gauge pin okay so we are on zero almost and now we move this zero plus I'm not sure it's a plus This gauge block got magnetized because I touched the surface plate, I, I touched the magnetic table. So right now it's sticking to this surface, so if I'm not pressing it down, I might get plus reading. So as you can see, I have the same value within a hundred of a millimeter or so. Here I have a minus four. So here I have a minus four. And here is basically zero so I have no idea how it's possible that on the milling machine while I was measuring with the incline um, magnetic table I'm getting 1.3 millimeters difference and here is just 400 of a millimeter so The difference is huge so as you can see at this point we are on zero and I have another gauge pin the same diameter that I'm gonna add here and this is a 30 millimeter gauge and I have here another 10 plus a 20 so basically still a 30 and I'm gonna add this here and we're gonna compare right at the end this can be with plus oh thank you it seems that my gib was bent while I was magnetizing it another way we can measure how parallel these two are are with gauge pins and gauge blocks so we have a 50, we have a 9.5, and here I have a 126. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten this a bit until I get the same measurement as I did before. So this fits. And then I'm gonna repeat what I have in the back.
basically here I have almost no play. So now I'm gonna slowly push these pins in the back. And see how far I can go with this. And by that point, I cannot push them anymore. Here I have absolutely no play. Here I had a bit of a play. But from this point on, no chance. Yeah, so basically what we have from this result is that basically this side it's way narrower so that tells me that on on this end the gib from this end it's wider than it should be it's not by a huge amount but i need to fix this somehow Right now I have no idea, I'm I'm confused, I have no idea why that measurement that I made on the milling machine is so so far off compared to the others. I know that the next, I think that the next solution should be to regrind that on a sign table, to regrind the gib on a sign table. Unfortunately, unfortunately I don't have access to a sign table that big uh, on the length, so I cannot quite regrind the, uh, the gib. The, the second solution would be to uh, scrape the gib in place, but I'm not very confident with that too. So I was thinking that I could be milling that on the milling machine and take a few hundreds from that end, but it seems that I cannot get the angle right and I have no idea why. So if you guys have figured out what I'm doing wrong, please let me know in the comments. I'd be grateful to read your answer there. Thank you.